Hello class, welcome to the lecture for 15-1. Once again, I find myself recording a video for the dash one of a chapter because chapter 15 is the culmination of pre-calculus, that this is everything in a nutshell that really is what calculus is about. We're gonna be doing polynomials, rational functions, and limits. And you've seen parts of these all before. You've probably done a fair bit with rational functions and polynomials. But this is the culmination of everything. This is where everything comes together and this is the most, we're, we're doing calculus um, a lot uh, in this chapter. We're building to be doing calculus this is the most calculus-like chapter of the entire book, and we get into a lot of things. So this chapter is gonna be quite long, the longest of the whole year, and I'm gonna need to break it up for you in quite a few lectures. So, first of all, before you even begin the Dash 1 stuff, I need to remind you of a lot of things that you should already know. There are quite a few things that you have forgotten from Algebra 2 that you cannot forget. Most people choke in calculus, not on calculus, but on algebra. So you've got to keep year over year, and our school system with its long summers and non-cumulative exams really doesn't help you keep stuff. And I know you don't believe me, but you must recall what you did in Algebra 2. So I'm gonna go over it quickly, but you've gotta summon it back up and you might have to go watch some other videos if you've forgotten things. So. The vocabulary that you need to have in your mind for this is pretty extensive. So if any of the words on this page are not making sense to you, you might want to get uh, out a pencil and write some of these down. So there are all the words that start, or end rather, with uh, nominal. And so mono is a prefix meaning alone. There's a good uh, vocabulary tidbit for you to keep for English. And so a monomial is an expression that is alone. So that could be something like 3x squared or half x cubed or things like that. It's all by itself. Now you look at this and you say, oh, there's two things there in an exponent. No. In math, whenever things are being multiplied, they count as one. That's why there's no symbol that we, we could write it like that. But most of the time in math, there's just no symbol. We're just saying this is one thing. A binomial, which is the prefix meaning two, is when you have three x squared plus two, or half x cubed plus three uh, x squared. That there are two things, and you can tell there are two things in each example because of the plus sign, or it could have been a minus sign. A trinomial would have three parts, like a tricycle is three, and poly is just a prefix meaning many. So when we string together a bunch of these, it's a polynomial. Now, technically in math, you could have horrible things like pi x to the negative three plus uh, x to the e. That that should be, you would think, would count as a polynomial. A polynomial is the sum of power functions. That's a power function, that's a power function. It should be a polynomial, but what we are going to do to be nice to ourselves, and this is sort of historical math reasons, is that we are going to have rigidly defined polynomials as having uh, integer coefficients, integer coefficients, and having a natural number only exponents. So that means no negative exponents, no fractional exponents, no decimal exponents and only uh, positive and negative uh, numbers as the coefficients in front of those. So 3x squared is cool, pi x squared is not, uh, x to the 172 is cool, x to the e is not. So this is the sort of rigid definition of polynomials that we're gonna be operating out of this chapter. Next, we've got function notation. You should have been familiar with this since chapter zero and we're gonna be using it a lot, so don't get it twisted. We need to be able to say um, what is f at zero, what is f at three, that kind of use of uh, function notation. And then you really have to be able to tell the difference between f of zero and f of x equals zero. When we are looking for zeros or solutions 
to a polynomial function, we want to know when the y is equal to zero. So if I've got some polynomial that looks like this, and I'm asking you for the zeros or for the solutions, I'm asking for the x-coordinates when the y is equal to zero, that there's some places where it crosses the x-axis, x-intercepts. Those are what solutions are, and when they say find the zeros of the polynomial, that's what they're talking about. Um, when we talk about coefficients, the most important one, the one that we're going to care the most about, is the one that's out front. So 3x squared plus 4x plus 9, that this 3 out in the front is what is called the leading coefficient. And of course, because it's a math book, they're going to try to trick you and they'll write it as negative 9 minus 4x plus 3x squared and you have to not get confused and say, ah, you didn't fool me. This guy is the one with the biggest uh, exponent and then this three, therefore, is the leading coefficient. This is different than, this is the opposite of the constant term, which is the one that comes last, that this one with no x on it uh, could be listed first if things are put out of order, but it's the one where there are no x parts to it. You could write, if you were pedantic, x to the zero, but it is the constant term because x to the zero is one. And those are the ones that will then tell you the uh, y-intercept here. I know, without knowing anything else about this function, this 3x squared one here, that it's going to look something like this. That there's going to be somewhere up here at 0, 9, that's going to be my y-intercept. And presumably there are no uh, x-intercepts. But this one, I can tell that because when I have 3x squared plus 4x plus 9, if I plug in 0, well, 3 times 0 squared plus 4 times 0 plus 9 is definitely just going to equal 9. So finding the y-intercept is a nice snap. Um, a rational function is when we take two polynomials and stack them on top of each other. So you might make some new function, h of x, made out of a polynomial on top of another polynomial, and that would be a rational function. So we'll get more into that as it comes up, but that's just hopefully a reminder of something you've seen before. And when we talk about polynomials, whether they're stacked on top of each other or not, they have a degree. Degree just means highest exponent, which is the biggest. So if they give it to you and they're tricky and they say that f of x equals x cubed plus x to the fifth, they're tricking you and the highest degree is still that five, whether they wrote it in order or not. I would prefer if you wrote your answers in order, that makes it a lot better, um, but they will try to trick you, so look out for that. And some of these have names, is that if we have x to the zero, then that is a constant function. If we have uh, x to the one, that's gonna be a linear function. x squared is our old friend, the quadratic. And, you know, that name is just so stupid. It's a two exponent, but we've got a Latin word with the root four in it, kind of like how December means 10. Um, and then we've got the much more sensible cubic function with a three, and uh, the quartic function with a four, quartic, and even, you don't need to know this, the quintic. That's just me showing off. All right. The lesson for 5-1, that was all supposed to be review of things that you should have known from the distant past. The lesson for 5-1 is polynomial long division. Again, something you should know from days gone by. If we are given some function, uh, some polynomial, and I'm going to do the example from page 671. Page 671 says what happens when we've got x cubed minus 9x squared minus x plus 105. And when I want to divide that by x minus 6, x minus 6, how does that go? I can't draw a straight line. How do I do that? Do you remember long division? Do you remember how to divide big numbers by little numbers? Let me, let me, let's try one of those. Let's go to a new page and just real quick, uh, let's just make up some numbers. Uh, six, seven, 
zero one nine eight three four seven. Okay, there's a huge number, and I'm gonna pick a nice one to divide it by. I'm gonna pick 11. So I try to do these throughout these videos to show you, to remind you how to do long division, but the process is the same, which is why I'm gonna tangent to this real quick. How many times does 11 go into 67? Well, obviously six. So now that I've picked six, I have to think about what is six times 11? It's 66, and if I subtract that, that is gonna be one. I bring down the next one, next number, and that's a zero. And how many times does 11 go into 10? Well, none, so I have to put a zero there, and then I'm gonna subtract zero, and that got me nothing, and I bring down the next one, and that's 101. Now, how many times does 11 go into 101? It goes nine times, so nine times 11 is 99, and then I break uh, that and I get two, yeah, just two. That was a long example, but that is the process that we're going through. So I have this picture up here from the video games back when uh, I was in high school that the process that I do to do polynomial long division is uh, reminds me of these uh, Duke Nukem, uh, uh, Quake and Doom and uh, Castle Wolfenstein and all these different games back in the day. And one of the coolest things that you had in these video games was the big freaking gun, the BFG. And there was a particular zombie level that really uh, stood out to me. And this zombie level said, if you blast the zombie too hard, it'll turn into a living creature. It's like they had negative hit points and you had to blow them up just right. So let's see if we can figure out what the just right setting would be and then shoot them, okay? So what you've got to think about here is the battle that we're facing at every point in polynomial long division is to say, how high do I need to turn up my X gun to blow away this X cubed? If I want to shoot it just right so that it gets to zero, I need to turn this all the way up to x squared. Think about that. If I multiply x squared by x, I'll get x cubed, which is exactly what I need. So I have to now, now that I've picked that, now I have to multiply both parts. So that's going to be x cubed minus 6x squared. Okay? So now that I've done that, I subtract. I multiplied and then I subtract and I purposely picked it so the first one would cancel, that goes away, and now negative nine minus negative six is negative three x squared, and I bring the next one down, okay? Now again, same gun battle. What do I multiply x by? But now I'm trying to go after this guy. Now I'm trying to get the negative three. So if I multiply x by negative three x, I will get negative three x squared but I have to live with all the little fallout here of what else is gonna happen. There's also going to be a positive 18 X made. And then I subtract that, and so the first one canceled, that's what we wanted. Negative X minus 18 X is negative 19 X. And I bring down the next guy, 105. And so I need to multiply by 19, that's gonna be, or negative 19. Negative 19 is gonna get me negative 19 X, and 19 times 6 is 4, carry the 5, 11. So that's minus 114. And now I subtract that term. So then minus 105, just to get the number, is 9. So then that is negative 9 is my remainder. All right, so hopefully that reminder there on how to do polynomial long division will make you appreciate when we find the faster way next time called synthetic division.